Got another question here for the uh, 13 rates of reaction topic. So as always, the link to the questions in the description. So if you want to try that first and then play on for the answers. Okay, so balancing the ion equation to start with, you'll notice I've got these red numbers above the bromine species. They're the oxidation numbers of the bromine in each of those. And what we're going to need to do is use the oxidation number change to balance or to start balancing the equation. So the reduction process is this plus 5 to 0. So that's a, a lowering of 5 in the reduction process. So obviously 5 electrons are being gained there. And then the oxidation process, you've got minus 1 up to 0. So that's an increase in 1. So each Br minus ion is losing one electron. So what you can't have is um, the electrons to not balance each other. So the way we get around that is we need to match the oxidation number change. So what that means is we're going to need a 5 in front of that Br minus ion. So now the overall... Um, the overall decrease is still 5, but now the overall increase is 5. Now we've got that 5 in, we don't want to touch these at all, because we don't want these to change. So we need, obviously, a 3 in front of the Br2, because we've got 6 Brs on the left. And then if we use the oxygens to get the waters balanced, so 3 Os on the left, so we need 3 H2Os. And now just finish off with the H pluses. So we've obviously got 6 H's on the right, so we need 6 H pluses on the left. And then if you wanted to, you could just check the charges balance. They do, by the way, but I'll just show you. So we've got an overall charge on the left of 1 minus, 5 minus, 6 minus, and 6 plus. We've got no charge overall on the left, obviously no charge on the right. So moving on to part B, we've obviously got to use all the data um, to get the orders of reaction for the three reactants. Uh, and then we've got to use that to work out the rate equation, and then we can find the value of the rate constant, K. So while the graph's still on the screen, this is going to tell us the order of reaction with respect to the BrO3 minus ion. So you can see this is a rate concentration graph. It's a straight line graph through the origin, so it's first order with respect to BrO3 minus. I'll just write that up now. So I'm just saying something like this. The graph shows a straight line through the origin. Really important that you say that. So it's first order with respect to BrO3 minus. We're then going to use the table to get the orders of reaction for the Br minus ion and the H plus ion. If you notice, this BrO3 minus ion concentration is not changing in the table. So obviously we can't use the table to get that. That's why we had to use the graph. So we're looking for a pair of experiments in each case to um, vary the concentration of one of the reactants and hold the other one constant. So you can see if we use these two experiments here, we can get the order with respect to Br minus because H plus ion concentration is constant. So what's happening to the concentration of Br minus? It's doubling. What's happening to the initial rate? It's also doubling. So therefore, it's first order with respect to Br minus. And then if we use rows 1 and 3, you can see Br minus ion concentration is constant. H plus concentration has doubled, but the initial rate has quadrupled. So it must be second order with respect to the H plus ion. So the rate equation is going to look like this. And if we rearrange for K, we get rate over the concentrations. So all I'm going to do now is substitute in a row of uh, results. I'll, I always use row 1 unless told otherwise. It doesn't matter which row you use because these will have all been done at the same temperature. So you get the same value for K. So using the values from the first row, I'm getting a K value of 0.0165. So moving up the units, all I've done is change the numbers to the units of everything. So because we've got H plus concentration squared on the bottom, we've actually got four lots of moles per decimeter cubed running along the bottom there. So we can cancel out one of the moles per decimeter cubed from the bottom. You can just simplify the denominator and then take it all up to the top and flip the sign. So we're getting these units here. Just quickly explain. So dm to the minus 3 times dm to the minus 3 times dm to the minus 3, when you take it up to the top, becomes dm to the 9. Moles times moles times moles, moles cubed. So we'll take it up to the top, it becomes moles to the minus 3. 
estimating someone's already up there, so that doesn't change.